So good afternoon, everyone. I like to welcome Dr. Srinivas Sundar Rajan sir, former director, and uh, you know very well he is very very popular among the students, and uh, we are always uh, remembering him because of many reasons. Uh, you know very well uh, flexible curriculum is in place. You know he was the man behind. Uh, everything and uh, at last you could see that nit is in a prestigious uh, state consistently by narf is also uh, because of uh, his efforts in linking with industries he was actively uh, engaging in uh, different transform especially futuristic transformation of nit trichy and many many uh, evolutions especially setting up center of excellence were all started during his tenure as a director of nit trichy and apart from this he was also a, he was retired from uh, as an outstanding scientist from drdo uh, that made him to have a very strong linkage with uh, many of the uh, industry institute interaction and in fact under tech cube we have one uh, the top institute of for our country that is nit was topping the list and uh, uh, it was uh, because of his uh, credentials so i like to welcome all the senior faculty members from nit starting from selva kumar sir arul daniel bakto chalam sir shriram kumar uh, shiva kumar from mbi mba all the senior faculty members from various departments and my own faculty members i like to welcome our head of the department dr dalachi madam and uh, uh, team of faculty members geeta karthik uh, satish from various departments above all i like to welcome the students so the, you are the uh, key for this particular lecture you know very well several series of lectures have been arranged in uh, biomedical instrumentation and uh, assistive devices uh, in, in this this is one of the very important and unique uh, uh, lecture so before i like to start uh, the present start this presentation i like to welcome uh, dr dalaj madam and also i like to welcome all the faculty members of nit to join with us in presenting the uh, memento for dr srinivas sundararajan so i like to welcome selva kumar sir arul daniel sir bakto jalam sir shriram kumar shiva kumar samina professor saminathan and uh, gururaj so all the senior faculty members and also our own faculty colleagues from ic department uh, karthik so all uh, geeta and sri devi can join so i like to is yes. So I like to welcome sir for his presentation on uh, innovations in biomedical devices. It's a fascinating experience to come back to this place after a long gap. You know, I had a very wonderful, wonderful time in this campus, and uh, and thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, memento. Because what happens is, whenever you go there, any any function or any place, uh, we get a memento. Someone gives big memento, something like that. 
So at the end, we landed up in uh, having some hundreds and hundreds of mementos. We <laughs> think we didn't know what to do with that. Actually, book is a very good uh, thing, and that too about Sherangam, it is really good. So thank you very much, uh, all of you. Thanks, and uh, uh, and also boys and girls, it's now very nice to see all of you here. And uh, uh, the, that's it actually because the campus life sometimes you feel it difficult to stay here and then you're happy to get out but what happens is when you get out I'm in contact with most of the alumni alumni students no, because Umar is in, I'm wondering how you guys are getting con contact with me because I'm, I'm in contact with the students who are, who, are, who are all you know in my period and uh, they always feel you know feel like uh, coming back, coming back to the campus. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. So thank you, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. So for the next few minutes, uh, I'd like to focus on, because all of you are interested in, uh, you, are, you are all working on biomedical devices, and uh, uh, I would like to focus on biomedical devices. What's happening in, in the area of biomedical devices? And uh, of course, I should congratulate you because, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you see the recession, you know, we see recession, sometime automobile goes up, automobile, then automobile recession takes place. Recently, we had IT, IT recession, people are losing their job. You know, everywhere, every industry, chemical, sometimes chemical industries go up and sometimes they come down. Every industry has to go through ups and downs and they have to go through recession. But you know, there are three, three areas where recession doesn't affect. Number one is health. Because our pay, we are, population is increasing, patients are increasing, diseases are increasing, so health will never go down. You know, that business, health business is a very good, a very good business to go up. Defense is another one. Whether you are a rich country or a poor country, every country spends a lot of uh, funds in, uh, you know, in defense. Always the defense industries will grow. Defense research also will go up. That will never undergo any recession anywhere. The, the education is always, it will never undergo any recession. Education is always a good business. When people lose their job somewhere else, they'll come and do the continuing education in uh, education. No, it's, it's a continuous process. To the end of the life, it's a continuous process. Education will never undergo this recession. So that way, you have chosen a very good line uh, uh, from, from the point of view of uh, reception, uh, from the recession. See, another advantage which I could see is, uh, uh, you know, the Growth is a slight scene. I, I, do you have problem in seeing, looking at my slide? Anyhow, I, anyhow, I, I'm just talking, okay. See, growth potential, if you see in the medical instrumentation or medical devices, uh, India is now, it is a, out of a global production, India is, uh, stands about 5% of the global production. About 10 years back, it was about 10% global production, but now, the other countries are growing up in a big way. We are already, you know, the, 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 there, is a, there is a big gap between products which are getting outsourced from other countries, especially China. The uh, Indian, uh, Indian potential is less. If you see the positive side of that, especially with the Chinese uh, uh, issues which are coming up now, if you see the positive aspects of this, we have got a tremendous growth potential. You know, this is a, this is one treasure where you you know you can uh, definitely get into anything because any 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 area you get in, whatever the discipline you belong to, any area you get in, th there is a tremendous uh, opportunity for you. The 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 of course large pa patient population is one of the main factor for you. The government policy is also very progressive. You see, when they introduced uh, uh, Make in India, the startup. But now they are also promoting the industry clusters and especially 
in the area of medical devices the government is funding in a very big way because they, they this is one area where india has to grow so you see in uh, andhra pradesh uh, in visakhapatnam uh, there is a medical cluster where there is a medical industrial estate another industrial estate has come up in bachapalli in hyderabad another medical uh, uh, devices estate has come up so along with the estate the testing certification facility the design facility all are coming up so that way the government is uh, also pushing all their efforts towards supporting people who are working on uh, uh, devices medical medical devices and the, the the in addition to all these things as students uh, may, many of you would like to go abroad because that's what happens for higher education higher education the the it's a interdisciplinary area you see pe- persons who are all involved in this research uh, they get better admissions in the uh, in the ivy universities that's also an advantage so friends we have good good future hmm? okay now let us see uh, having said this let us put our focus what's the focus area where should i focus one is you know the early de- uh, early disease detection plays a major role because the diseases nowadays they go very fast so early in a uh, you know, few years back tuberculosis took a lot of time because you have to develop the culture you have to see you know by the time you see something is happening to a patient he is already in uh, or if the patient you know is negative is not in that he is under the torture early detection of disease is important another focus is uh, minimal invasive treatment minimal invasive procedures you know no more major surgeries you now we are talking about keyhole surgery brain surgery uh, you know the, the the areas connected with the invasive surgery a minimal invasive procedure Uh, that, that is going to play a major role we don't want to get disturbed we want to come out after finishing the operation on the same day the uh, improved treatment efficacy is another now now you know what you, you are giving some drug treatment you know what what's the drug it's effective not effective you would like to know whether it's got a allergy or whether got a side effects and then how to control them this is all very fast you have to you have to get it in, in fact the uh, treatment efficacy is very 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 important now it's it's not like a good old days it that, that's another focus area we have to take it into consideration the patient monitoring is uh, is one which is uh, of interest to all of you you know it is not the patient which meeting the doctor and uh, getting admitted in the hospital and going through some treatment and then coming out the patient is monitored within the hospital outside the hospital before the treatment during the treatment but mainly after the treatment and also patient we don't call patient ourselves see watch so variable so we, we you know so somewhere we we want to have an information that you are not okay so this is to be done so that monitoring has to be done and and obviously all of us patient we call patients we want a good life good quality of life that's where things like wheelchair and all these things no we want to live, live comfortably that's also part of our game so this this uh, keep it in mind friends this 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 is our focus okay let us go to the next stage it's not even though i'm saying everything good 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 but there are also challenges what we call as roadblocks it is difficult when you work on this field it's very difficult because uh, stringent regulatory conditions you are treating with a human being and regulatory conditions are really stringent we have to go through that and uh, uh, then we are doing something we are all interested in okay this is a good business we are doing we are innovating we are getting into the good innovation you take more time because the world is moving very fast you have to keep up with the innovation that that's that's also very important your speed of work is very important and then the cost of development is very high in especially in certain areas only big industries can afford to cost of development is extremely high and uh, of course the major thing is it is interdisciplinary expertise that's where friends in this group 
if uh, whenever you are forming your friend, your friend should not be from the same department. It should be from some other department. And then you have to form your own group, interdisciplinary. Okay. The other side is, let me, having, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking abstract with uh, what are the advantages, what are the challenges and all. But uh, let me t uh, share a story with you. My interest in this uh, area started with a small incident. Um, one of the scientists in the missile program, a gold medalist from IITs, uh, when he was sleeping, something happened to him. He, he had some issues, psychological issues, something happened to him. And he got some, he, you know, some sort of a dream. Some, something happened to him. So at the middle of the night, at 12 o'clock, he rang up Kalam. Kalam was in his office because normally he goes to his room around 2 o'clock. He rang him up and told him that uh, Dr. Kalam, that is the time when, uh, that is the time when, um, you know, we, we were successful in Agni and uh, we were quite popular in the missile program. He told him, Kalam, you are great and, uh, you know, uh, you achieved a great scientific achievement. But I want you to realize one thing, you know, you are working for destruction of society. Please correct yourself. And Kalam by nature is a, you know, he's a very timid person. He was terribly disturbed. And the next day morning, we, morning we have our, our meeting. It's called morning darbar. Some 10 of us, uh, we meet in the morning to discuss what has happened on the previous day. He called that person. That scientist came, young scientist. He came, he didn't know what happened on the previous night. He knew that he talked something to Kalam, but he didn't know what he talked to Kalam. But uh, then he came and fell at his feet. I'm sorry, sir, something happened. I'm sorry, I'm not aware of it. And Kalam told him, no, 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 but you are given a good message. I'm taking your message. You have, you have done a correct thing. And uh, that's the thing, we, that, that's the time he asked us to sh shift our focus to see how the defense application could be shifted to a civilian application and more and more on the medical application. Another thing happened around the same time that uh, you know people are getting heart attacks and heart problems and all. So government subsidizes the treatment. So that time they were ca costing the treatment of 1.5 lakhs. So but the government was giving a reimbursement of 75,000. They represented to him, sir, why can't you increase it to 1.5 lakhs? So it's a government decision. Kalam took it up the government decision that's different. But then he wanted to know why that operation costs so much, why the cost is high. And that's where we landed in stent. And he said that the main portion of that is the stent. Stent, he asked us to work. First, you attack on the stent. You develop your own stent. That's the first time I saw stent also in my life. I, I didn't know what's a stent. But it's a very simple thing for us. A steel, which we are using for the missile program, a better high quality steel, miniature spring, and then small, small miniature parts, which we are very conversant for our gyroscopes and our miniature parts. So we are comfortable, we went ahead. Quickly made it actually, that, that was not a big issue. So we made it. And to some, immediately we joined with the, as you know, based on missile program, we joined with the production industry, a hospital, and then conducted the trials. The stent was successful. So Kal Kalam Raju stent came up. Raju was the chief of that hospital. That is the one part of the story. The second, the way I say the two sides of the, two sides of the coin, the the company, I don't want to mention the company, all of you know about it. The company which was selling the uh, you know, stent, they reduced the price. Of course, our purpose was achieved, reduction of the price. It was a drastic reduction of the price. Second, we, we, in fact, we were finding it difficult to get it certified. You know, everything has to go through the US uh, you know, certification agency for putting onto this at that time, for putting onto the heart. So, and then the patient also, the customer, he created a problem for us because you go to the patient, you say, this is Indian stent, this costs 20,000 rupees. This is uh, American uh, stent, 
this costs about 75,000 rupees. He, he doesn't want to take it away. Any no one wants to take a risk to Indian state. So the, even though the project was ex successful, very successful, uh, it, 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 it just, it was on the collapsing way. But nevertheless, we start following stent. If you see today, uh, there are, the stent itself is, uh, you know, they, they, they are getting into the drug eluting stents. A lot of research is going on in this. I, I'm listing the areas where uh, uh, the research is going on now. Uh, the release of medication to prevent any clogging. A lot of work is because quoted stents are available and then the release of this, this is, uh, you know, this is to go through the certification and all. Then the area where our chemical engineers, chemistry and other people can, well, materials, materials people, you know, biocompatible bio coatings, a lot of work is remaining. It's a trouble design. It's a good potential. Any, anything on biocompatible bio coatings anywhere, it's, it's a worth uh, doing. The, then the another uh, one is coating, or we are talking about polymers, it, that also should be biodegradable. It should not remain. Then the struts, no, struts have got struts. Struts are there inside. Very thin struts. So the design, miniature struts, the thinnest strength struts is to ballooning, the struts being used to drop. That, that is another another area where people are working now. Instead, this is the global R&D areas. Then reabsorbable, reabsorb, bio reabsorbable stents. You know, it, it, it's another area. So these, these are areas where we, we, when you call, you say, you know, when you, you need to go along with the stream, anyone who would like to go in the research area on this, these are the areas which are going to be useful for us. Um, of course, heart wall, we didn't do anything, but I want to mention about it, because heart wall we wanted to do, uh, uh, he, uh, he sent us to Dhanavati Hospital in, uh, in Mumbai, they are very famous for heart uh, research. And uh, that's the first time I saw a heart, you know, looking like I wanted to see a heart. They brought a plastic bucket full of about 60, 70 hearts, uh, you know, with all the walls and all this. Because the patient for, on whom they conducted the surgery, after they pass away, the heart is supposed to be given back to the uh, hospital. Heart wall that time was initially, they, they were, we were using titanium. But afterwards, the titanium has been changed over to uh, uh, carbon, carbon composites because that was more, more, uh, 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 more okay with the uh, with the body. The, the the durable materials at that time we are talking about non-corrosive, long life material. That's why the titanium thing came up. But now compatibility is the thing. If you go to titanium and giving a, a, a compatible coating, you get into the straight away composites. Then here. The anti-calcification technology. Calcification is one very important thing for anything with the heart. Anti-calcification technologies. And then patient-specific uh, uh, walls. In fact, this is the one area which is also of interest to you because this is, these are the things which are available for you during your student days, 3D printing. 3D printing of the walls is a very good, because it's a patient-specific. Each our walls, even though they are trying to make a, a you know common like a butter shoe, nine, ten, and all size, we cannot make a wall like that. All these days we are doing like that, you know. You are, whatever is available, you try to fix that. Now the three D printing, you can do it to 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 exactly the same way in which your body will accept it. Then uh, the another one is a tissue wall. Tissue wall is a very major area, using the tissues because this is more more. More closer to uh, the our heart, heart. Uh, this thing. The, another stage of tissue wall is cut the tissue from your own body and use use it for a wall. You know, this is another uh, area. So you see, th th this is how quickly you have to do something. You have to cut it from the body and then you do 3D printing. You make a wall, fit the wall. This is the research area. This is a fantastic area to get in. Now let me come to the next one. This is this is where we face you know, very good success. You know the polio polio uh, affected students, polio affected children. Uh, they they were uh, using the aluminium and steel, uh, uh, you know the, the prosthetics. 
prosthetic fitting. Oh, yeah. And uh, then, the two things. One, it was uh, heavy. It was uh, weighing around 4.5 kilogram. We were using carbon composites for Agni. So trying to change it, we changed it. It's a big, big story, but I'm cutting short, we made it. It came to about 450 grams. And then the carbon composites, you know, children when they grow, their legs also grow, the metal, you know, scratch. And uh, they, it cracked bruises and all, no? The, so, but uh, when we make it out of uh, uh, composite, composite, uh, uh, the uh, composite prosthetic attachment, it, it gets adjusted. So children found it easy, easy to go through. In fact, I was with, uh, you know, in the Kalam's, uh, 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 in his own story, someone asked him a question, well, what was your happiest moment in your life? Then he replied that, uh, you know, the happiest moment was uh, when he walked along with a, uh, a boy with that, uh, you know, prosthetic leg, and the parents were shedding tears. You know, he, he, was, he was trying that thing. And at that time, I was there along with him in the Nizam hospital, and uh, we, were, we were going through the entire uh, uh, thing. This is the this is a story about the prosthetic. But now, we, we, I talked about carbon fiber because it is uh, giving a very good strength. It should not break. And the rigidity while bearing the lightweight. Titanium, titanium fittings, that's good for biocompatibility. That silicone, wherever you want to fit in the liner, silicone, silicone comes in. And then thermoplastics for the customization, wherever you want to do that, because it's easy to make a thermoplastic component. The research area is going on in this. Uh, this is one possible research all of us can take it up. Because this is a, this is one, there are quite a good number of patients, not polio, no accident, so many things are there. And now, the, in the same way, whatever we are talking about, you put all your sensors over there. You put all your devices over there. You know, you can do, you know, you can attach whatever, uh, like, me, like making a good sambar, you can make a very good very good, uh, uh, you know, with all these attachments and all. You, you can walk, you know, some GPS will give you where, where you are going and where, what you should not do. Where, is there something which is getting you, it's going to be some, some pit in front of you. All these things are possible. And this is possible in India. Now, uh, this, this is where you can do it in the institute, you can do it in the industry. This is the, any, anything in this area, when compared to heart, this is a very, very easy thing. Of course, the, this is... Uh, this is one, uh, the, the, this is the current development, current work is going on in this uh, uh, census. You know, if, if you talk in your language, first, number one, census, they detect muscle movements and uh, hand signals. So if you have to shake the hand, you know, you, they, they know with whom, you know, the, you know the Russian method of shaking the hand. The Russian method of shaking the hand is they will squeeze you. The more they squeeze, that they love you more. You know, so they they detect the muscle movements, and then receive their hand signals. The microprocessors they interpret the signals, connect, and then control commands is given separately. This is then we have the actuators, small motors, and all. With the result, a person who is not having the hand, he is comfortable, and he is more comfortable than us. Of course, these are the things which we gave us a lot of confidence that we are capable of doing anything and everything. We tried for the paralytic attack uh, persons and then we devised the, uh, both the legs and then went for uh, testing in common any hospital or an hospital where we wanted to test that. It, the, we had whatever the sensors, height sensor, you know, we we will discuss because walking is not all that easy. If you see the technology of walking, you know, it's a brain acts a lot. You have to lift your leg, sense your what is there in that, then you have to bring it down. When you are bringing it down, you have to come down slowly. And by the time you touch the ground, you should touch it smoothly. This is what we do. Why we don't realize it. But for a person who's not having that, this is important. We have to design for that. We designed and we thought it is successful. It was not. 
In fact, the, that miserably it failed because uh, uh, when we gave the signal, the patient was okay, but the, the leg went up. And then another signal, it went and crashed on the you know uh, floor. The patient, he was laughing because he didn't realize what was happening to him. Because anyhow, he didn't have any feelings in that time. But we, God is great. So we didn't want to go beyond a particular stage. We stopped at that stage and then came out. Another very important and which is possible for you to do is the conventional wheelchair, which you see everywhere. This wheelchair has got tremendous potential in market in, in all the, you know, globally, this is one of the biggest business there, the, I think. So why, why, that wheelchair is not our regular wheelchair, what you are seeing. The wheelchair, a smart wheelchair. It is improved with hand rims. You are doing the 3D printing of the, <coughs> of the parts to the requirement of the patient. And then you include the safe, safe, uh, uh, safety feature. The future is going to be, we are talking about EV vehicles, driverless vehicles. But it is now, it is a guided self-driving wheelchairs. That's coming up. And then the battery life which is there, you talk about the car. The car, we, we are talking about, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, lithium batteries. Improve the battery life. The same thing is applicable to the wheelchair. The uh, brain-computer interface that's the that's the major area now, which many of the you know international global agencies are working, a number of universities are working, global universities are working on this. Brain computer interfaces is important. That is, I want to go somewhere, which will take you there. And uh, another, you know, if you see the houses abroad, all the houses they have the bedrooms in the first floor. So long you are young, it's okay, it's fine. When you become old, they find it difficult to climb up. But at that time, they cannot change the, you know, this is the custom, this is a regular thing, everywhere you see the thing. So the wheelchair has to go up. So they have made some fixtures where the wheelchair will go up. That's the people are using that. But the stair climbing capability is uh, another, another development which is going on. IIT Madras, uh, you know, uh, Sujata team is doing a lot of work in um, wheelchair. In fact, anybody is interested. They, she, she is, uh, you know, they, they are doing wonderful job in terms of uh, wheelchair. You know, you would have seen. Many of you would have seen that. You know, it has come. You know, you can stand, uh, stand up. All, all those uh, things possible with the wheelchair. Wheelchair is a good area. I, I just uh, pass on with the mems and nems. Um, this aspect is a complicated technology or complicated testing, miniature. To some extent, we have control on MEMS. To a large extent, MEMS is still giving us a problem. So with all this, we have to go for certification and all. But then, if you, if you, see, uh, if you see a lab on ship, then one of the things is go through precision Dose, precision dosing, that is precision drug delivery. Another aspect is miniature, less invasive. Another one, multifunctional sensing, activation, microfluidics, all in a single chip. This is the, this is the, you know, for rapid diagnosis, the lab on chip is again coming up. This is a mass production, cost reduction. This has got, now I'll come to the final point. Most of you, it's an interesting area for you because we are all working on art, AI everywhere, as much as possible. One, one is, of course, computing is your, uh, uh, you know, your strength. We would like to get into the computing as much as possible. So AI is coming up in a big way. It has come up in a big way. There is no doubt about it. In fact, this is the Economist um, April 2024 issue. They, they are they have published an article, if you would like to go through, you go through. They have published an article on a doctor. A doctor, that's why you see the head is not there. A doctor will function everything. Diagnosis, everything. In fact, he will do better than the human doctor. You know, if you bring an x-ray or something, a report on some of the major diseases, Doctors to doctor will differ. 
because interpretation is a problem. But the computer will not make a mistake. A doctor is going to replace, uh, you know, in, the, in terms of diagnosis, yes. In terms of, we are already having, you know, discuss with, we discuss with the medi medical uh, thing, you can discuss and then find out Google. They, we talk about Google doctor. But now Google doctor has become A doctor now. And this is more powerful. While it is easy for me and fascinating for us to talk about this, you see the why economics, I was wondering why economists is uh, bothered about this. This is very difficult to implement. You see the other side of the story. Other side of the story is, you know, a doctor is not a doctor alone. If you see a hospital, hospital has got one big group. Someone takes care of management, uh, as I said, someone is taking care of uh, patients, uh, you know, then there are testing laboratories, they, uh, you know, they, there are so many things available. If you say a doctor will replace everything, it is, it is not possible. Doctors themselves will not accept it. That change culture is extremely difficult. Certification, already we are talking, the certification in the bio, you know, bio devices is extremely difficult. For a doctor, it's much more difficult. It is very, 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 very difficult. Even though, you know, even though, the, in fact, the, the article, they discuss about the entire thing, what a doctor can do, but at the same time, the issues, why is it a possible, is it not possible, they look at it from the economy point of view. So if you see from the business everywhere, let me, uh, I think I'll conclude at this stage and then open for a discussion. You see, promising changes is for anything in AI, you need data. India doesn't have much of a control on data. Other countries do have. My data, my health data is my property. You cannot interfere in that. So that has to be securely secured. India, India is that type of regulations are not there. In fact, that's why you see many universities are coming and looking for the uh, you know, uh, data from our side. Uh, data, the regulation, and then the incentives for, for you do, if you do this, if, if you say that I'm developing the AI doctor, I'm de developing the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the devices, what for? You want money, you want business. But they want incentives. He says, hey, doctor, also, suppose he does everything, is the hospital going to give him incentive? Is he going to pay him? No. Their cost will come down. Once their cost comes down, see, so for example, uh, business, suppose you make a toothpaste, a toothpaste, if it costs 10 rupees to manufacture, they sell it for 200 rupees. But 190 rupees, they throw it back in the business. You know, they, they advertise and they, they put it back in the business. Hospital, if you say that I have saved on so many things and then I develop this, they say thank you. That's it. But they will not give money to you. That money, they will take it back. So that is, incentive is not that. So with this, that type of AI doctor may not take place in the near future. I'll come to the last slide. This is very important. If you, anybody working on any project, you leave alone your, uh, you know, your um, devices, any project, devices is much more difficult. You see, how do we go through ideation, conceptual, concept, conceptualization, one to two months? Afterwards, we go for formulation and regulation committee. That, that's the one which takes six to 12 months. Then our design, development, verification, and validation, that takes another six to 12 months. Manufacturing testing, six to 12 months. Clinical trials and approval, one to three years. Finally, is it over? No, you launch, and then post-market analysis you have to do. So, the only thing when you are working on these devices, it's a long process. But today, what we are having is the, is the year of disruption. Things do change very fast. What has happened yesterday is not happening today. If at all you want us to guess something, 
we can guess for next one year, two years. We cannot guess uh, beyond. The so-called Forbes uh, top 100 industries about uh, 10 years back, they are not at all in the list now. They are all gone. So disruption is very fast. So if you have to go, it's the speed which is mattering. Which, the speed matters. You see, this is a running, running car. You have to change the wheel while the car is running. You know, that's the speed is, that speed is required for current development. Do we have time for this? This is another serious issue for this. So friends, I have just triggered your mind. My idea is of this talk is to trigger your mind to tell you that you are in a good technological line when compared to other things, number one. Number two, it's good if you get into either higher studies or if you get into the businesses because it's a very, very good growing business. The number of industries are coming up in this. The number three, you have to be, you should not be terrorized by the challenges, but at the same time, you should be aware of this and you should have a strategy to get into this, uh, how, to, how to counter these strategies, how to counter these uh, uh, difficulties, challenges. And number four, you have to be really fast. It's called frog jump. You know, you cannot go, this is a conventional way. If you, if you, if you see a way of teaching the biomedical uh, uh, thing, how do you execute? We go through all the stages. This concept has gone. This concept is useless now. All these things, you have to go concurrently. Concurrency is more important. While you do this, the, you know, that, that's, that's a point I want to bring, bring out to you, is that, you know, you have to change the wheel while you are driving. You say, you have to do it concurrent thinking. You should have a team which, which is take care of simultaneously. And uh, uh, you have to face the challenges as and when it's required. For all this, you need a team. For that team, you need interdisciplinary team. And then look for market. Well, guys, this is, I just want to uh, uh, trigger your thoughts on this. Think about this. And I uh, hope this will give you something good for your thought. Any question? So you, uh, I'm not sure if you heard it right, but you mentioned about uh, working with Kalam, sir. Uh, you mentioned about working with APJ uh, Kalam, sir. So like, uh, what was it exactly and how was it working with him? For me, personally? Yeah. Well, that's a big story. I'm very People ask me to write a book on that. Because I am working, well, I worked with Kalam on a personal side, I think, almost for 30 years. And um, uh, it's very difficult to answer your question in short. But uh, let me tell you, one, it is very difficult to work with him. You know, he is a, he's a workaholic person. Second, uh, we call him missionary. He's, he is a converted missionary in the sense he's a highly short-sighted person because he is a project man and he, has, he wants a result immediately. And if he will ask you, well, his normal way of, uh, when, when you, when, just when he walks the class, he will, his normal way of asking is, what's happening? What's happening? We don't know what's happening. No big. Then you have to say anything, anyhow you have to say, tell him something, this is happening, this is what I've done. But if you start saying that, that, that I'm doing this, I'm doing this, oh, this is what you told me five days back. This is our Akbar days. What's happening now? <laughs> He's a tough guy. But he's a very, very, very soft person, extremely soft person. And uh, uh, anything and everything, whatever uh, we are projecting to him, it will go into his mind and convert it to a major society-oriented project. He hears, he heard everything. Whatever we talk about, he, he will be hearing. He would like to be criticized. He won't like yes sir, no sir, like that, you know. 
he, he wants the people to criticize. <laughs> In fact, when, when you, some, someone criticizes, your thing, you know, your actual uh, thing comes out. In fact, I had a very uh, nasty situation. I had a very good occasion with him. Two nasty situations we had with him. One, you know, I came to Trichy along with him uh, to St. Joseph uh, College. Before that, we came to REC Trichy and he gave a talk. In St. Joseph College, when he was at this, he was writing some. Always he used to write on a piece of paper. I, in the project, I used to think that all of us used to think that, uh, you know, they, because when you are talking, you are taking the notes. And that's what he remembers and then, uh, you know, asks you later. Here, since I was sitting next to him, I just speak to them, I saw he was writing something in Tamil. Then I looked at him, oh, what is that you are writing? Then he said, it is some kavita, it is a poem. I took that. But later on I gave to say Saint Joseph and then I told him that you you know, he has thousands of poems, you know, that is, a, that is his passion. But he didn't do anything with that. So that's one part of the story. The second part of the story, uh, someone, you know, uh, uh, was closer to him, she appreciated and uh, she translated uh, all his poems into English. And the release, book release, it's the first book of Kalam. Book release was uh, in a very famous hall of administrative star college. Both of us went there. Uh, that time he was secretary, we came from Delhi. Both of us went there. It was a good, I also got a copy and uh, everything was happy. So when we were traveling back, I, he asked me, how, how, how is it? I was, he was very happy, I was, how is it? I told him, everything is good, sir, but one thing, one, one observation I'm making is, uh, you know, when you write in Tamil, I see the punch. When someone translates into English, that punch is missing. He felt upset. I, I gave my comment straight away, but uh, he felt very much upset. That's the time I realized that his, his passion is, uh, you know, he had an inferiority complex. His passion was to write book. He wanted some book to come in his name. But I, I caught him at the wrong foot. That was a very nasty situation I had with him. But the second was still more uh, difficult for me. Uh, that was the time when, um, you know, he was uh, um, declared as a, as, a, as a candidate for the presidency. And then he came to our place. Normally, I used to go for a morning walk. Morning walk, we talk, no, no official thing, morning. So why I went and uh, to meet him, I went there, but there's a big crowd in the guest house, in front of guest house. They didn't allow me to get in. Then he, he saw from the first floor, then he said, you stay there, I'll come out. Then he came out, then we walked. So we were walking, and a big crowd, no security, all those people were following. Everything was going very fine. He was very happy and uh, all those things happening. I was just become more confident in talking to him. He asked me, see, well, what do people think about my presidential candidature? I told him, yes. I hope everyone, I, I think everyone, everybody is happy. No problem. But some are commenting that uh, you are a politician. And uh, uh, how, how you are a scientist, and how are you going to be in the midst of how, how are you going to perform in the midst of a politician? They don't know who you are. That's a only one sentence I added. They don't know who you are. I, I that one sentence triggered him off. Completely stopped and then started shouting at me. Do you think that I'm a polit politician? What nonsense you are talking? How can you say that I'm a politician? I, I realized my mistake actually. That I, I was too free with him in something I came up just like that. I, I didn't know how to go back on that actually. I didn't know how to, that too he's becoming president at all. <laughs> then I managed, the one thing is, they don't know, see you, 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 are in, you, you, you are in Delhi for the last, you are in Delhi for the last 10 years. And you are working with the politicians, you are working with the ministers, you are working with the prime ministers. Once you are working here, you are working with scientists. Once you are working with the politicians, you are also becoming politician only. That way you are a politician. He didn't agree. 
he didn't agree with that. And uh, that, that's all. Back we, we He started walking fast. We went to a building. He sat. I also sat. The entire thing was being seen by the uh, group which was coming. All of them had come to him to tell him something. I want this, I want that and all. No? They saw his, uh, his losing mood and shouting at me. That's it. I, he went off. They all came and called out. What is the nonsense you have done? Why are you shouting like this? We have never seen him shouting. I have never seen him shouting. He never gets angry. They were all shouting at me. That day evening he went to Delhi. And uh, he was in the guy, our guest house in Delhi. The press, I was also watching the team. What's going on. In the press, someone asked, Sir, you are not a politician. How are you going to manage President's uh, post? Prompt, he gave a reply. Who said I am not a politician? <coughs> For the last 10 years, uh, I am working with it. I seen three prime ministers, three defense ministers. And day in and day out, I am talking with the ministers and the MLAs and MPs. I know in and about of the politics. I am I manage. My masala has gone that side. Yeah. See, that, that is his, uh, you know, even though he, he may like or may not like the statement or whatever the way he made, but um, he takes it seriously and uses it up, up, uh, appropriate. There are hundreds and hundreds of occasions, but these two, I think I, I should I should start with you at this stage. Thank you for asking this question. I work on this, all the best. I should work on health. That's really good. Any more? Any questions? Any more questions? Good. So, thank you. Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Sir, you were discussing with the last slide, you were saying the process of generating a device, biomedical device and stuff. So, and you advise to have a research group or uh, with inter, uh, all experts from interdisciplinary fields. Do you think we, uh, they have to be like uh, spending their whole time as a, on this project alone or they can work in part time also? Like, is it possible? Uh, being a professor, uh, I take uh, help from medical uh, doctors or someone. And I work on weekends to make some bills. Is it will it work or should I create a company for it and no, generate funds? Work here. See, it's a good, very good question, very pertinent question, especially for the those researchers working on this area. See, when we talk, nothing works without the presence of doctor here. You know, you cannot you cannot uh, uh, do anything engineering in isolation with the doctors group. If you could see the doctors group whom I come across. Uh, you know, either in Nanavati Hospital that time, or recently, you know, uh, uh, we are trying to work on artificial heart, you know. So, the doctors who are uh, working on this, uh, they are very, very conversant with the CFD. They are very conversant with, the, you know, uh, venture flow, how, how it's everything. They are quite comfortable on this. Without the doctor, you cannot work. Okay. NIT doesn't have uh, hospital. So one way of working is this, whatever you are tying up with the uh, 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 Sri Chitra Thirunar at that time we were there, then Apollo, uh, 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 this is one. At the Geetam University, some of the, in two, three universities it's there, the advantage they have is they have got a medical college inside. So both of them work together. So that's a, that's a model Karakpur IIT is following. Karakpur IIT has got, that's a very good model. That's an emerging model which is coming up. In US, the doctors undergo uh, uh, MS qualification, uh, engineers, sorry, engineers. Engineers, uh, quite, quite popular in the area of, in fact, uh, they, they are working on MEMS and NEMS and all. The husband and wife, the, those two doctors, they, they, those two professors of Penn State University, 
they are no, they are, they are qualified doctors now. They are qualified doctors and they are, they are, they are medical doctors. So doctors and engineers have to be together. Future, the degree is going to be engineering without borders. That way, you will not have electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering and all, all put together. Second, future, artificial, the computer coding, this, this type of activity will come up, go down also. But core engineering, core engineering, because everywhere you have to apply computer, that's where the A and ML is coming up in a big, big way. So the future is going to be for those who are mixing the skills of both. That's fun. The third important is your question. Is future is initially collaborating with the medical. But it's going to be already which is taking place somewhere else uh, is you have to study both. It is going to be, you know, right now we are talking about in engineering, your uh, degree you are giving in ICE, uh, no? So, ICE. Okay, so in future is going to be degree in engineering. But if you still go further, it is going to be medical engineering. It is a, it is a combination. So your question is if you have to go out and then work, it is difficult. It is difficult to work within the camp. Campus, you've got a lot of facilities. If you talk as a PhD student or as a student here, uh, you've got all faculty support, you've got, uh, uh, you know, Faculty, whether they support you or not, if you attach your name, their name along with you and go somewhere, people will respect you because they have got their own respect. So th this is one one very uh, uh, campus gives you a lot of power, which you don't realize when you are inside the campus. If you if you come out of the campus, uh, you you will not get entry pass to get into anything. Especially this type of areas are high, highly, uh, you know, even the work, most of the work, what I'm describing, most of the work are confidential in their own way. In fact, I, I visited a number of places in San Francisco, but the, it is a, they, they are all uh, highly classified. Your campus connect is important at every age. At my age, it is important. I am, I am see, I am, I'm still within the campus. I am an academician still. It's important for me. Right now, if, if you have to meet a doctor in, uh, uh, now here also, if you have to meet a doctor, first you have to go through someone who takes all the details and then uh, then only you can meet the doctor. The doctor spends, because they say send everything in the computer, doctor spends only about 10-15 minutes with you because he has got all the reports, but initially the junior doctor would have taken care of all those things. That's the first type of interaction. The junior doctor has been replaced by, already it has been replaced by a assistant. Now a assistant does everything. And in fact, uh, they have entered into a limited way. In whatever I'm talking about is uh, they have entered, uh, well, what's your temperature, what's your, they have entered into a limited way. Right now, they are uh, trying to integrate the core competence of the doctor with the AI. In fact, all the major groups are working. On all, all major groups, whatever uh, we come across, all of them are working on you're taking the core core uh, thing from the doctors because if for AI that is a basic thing someone has to pay and then train the person initially so this is take this will take time while you are, what you are saying true for the present perspective but may not be true in the years to come uh, it, uh, because in the Google you Google doctor we talk about now you go to Gemini Gemini you know Gemini. Uh, 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 the chat GBT, 
You give your problem, it gives your possible problems, your possible effects. What is the status? How many patients are there? How many side effects are there for the thing? All, all is given. Tuck, 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 tuck. Everything is given. You do not spend much of time in that. Government initiative today of introducing that healthcare, computerizing the healthcare, is also uh, you know they, they are uh, it is called some program uh, like a Jal Jeevan program and all for health there is a very major program uh, where they are connecting the entire uh, country with the health reports and uh, uh, the, the, it is going in that direction. Okay. Country strength in um, is there in uh, digital digitization. We are going in that direction, but basic research is required. My brother is a 80, 80 plus a role person, doctor, famous doctor. He spends most of the time in discussing with because he's a AI, uh, he's a AI, uh, teacher for them. Sir, Dr. Daniel. Sir, when you were uh, the director, you had taken care of the mental health of students in a big way. Like say, when they had a uh, lot of distress, you had reached out to them. But as biomedical engineers, they are into alleviating uh, the physical discomfort. But biomedical engineering hasn't concentrated on the mental health of people. So what, what, what are your comments about that? Uh, um, uh, the, the Institute in ba Bangalore, uh, what is that institute? Ram, huh? Nimhans. Nimhans has got a big group in trying to connect this uh, 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 this particular issue. But it's uncomfortable to start with. See, uh, I'm a great appreciator of Dr. Bennett. Okay. And uh, Dr. Bennett is the most unpopular person among the students when, uh, you know, when, as far as the teaching or, uh, you know, he has got a very strict way of, uh, very strict, extremely strict. It is very difficult to convince uh, Dr. Bennett. This is one part. Second part, the same students, when they come out, if you see in the alumni side, the most lovable, the most, the, if you say who is the best person in uh, NIT, they, they come to, uh, they immediately they say it's Dr. Bennett. See, th that uh, the, the aspect is what we call as a comfort zone. So we are all in comfort zone. Uh, obviously, students are very much in comfort zone. When you are trying to take them out and by giving them the problems and innovative problems and try to teach them how to innovate and how to, how to go about on that, they are taken to the uncomfortable zone. That's where you are coming to that uh, uh, uncomfortable zone. But what happens is, this is a second level of circle. What happens is, the third aspect is the growth. And the growth, it becomes comfort. In fact, this is exactly what happens. Initially, comfort zone, take you out of comfort zone and put you in the uncomfortable zone. And then you get out of that by doing your initiatives and you do some change management and all. And then go back to the growth. So growth curve goes over there. In the, but in the process, Many of the students, especially in the adolescent age, they find it difficult. And uh, uh, this needs to be, uh, 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 even though I'm, I'm replying your question in a very simple way, uh, whatever you're saying is applicable to this group, that is the entire NIT community, and every, every group in IITs and other places. And uh, I also know somebody who was in biomedical uh, getting nervous breakdown at all. Uh, this, uh, you know, probably, if you, you, you raised a very serious question, probably there should be initiative to attack it in the beginning itself. And uh, we have to go smoother. Especially, this, is, this is normally prevalent with the PhD scholars. They, they are also under tremendous uh, mental stress. The, the, I, I don't know the correct picture, but there is a big research going on on this. 
that, that is one of the core research area, future research area for, in one of the universities uh, in the US. Good. Right. Good. First session. So I request uh, Professor Dhanlesh Madam, Head of Instrumentation Control Engineering, to say, say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. On the outset, I thank Dr. Srinivas, uh, sorry, Dr. Sivakumaran for arranging uh, such a talk today because uh, we haven't heard from Dr. Srinivas and Sundar Rajan earlier, but to specifically in the area of biomedical area devices. Never did I expect this from you, Professor. And it was really very nice. You have given a, a wonderful roadmap for students because those students from our department have been introduced through this uh, course on biomedical instrumentation or an elective courses through, uh, through assistive devices or any other medical diagnostics based courses. Still, hearing from such an eminent person uh, with a very good renowned uh, uh, research potential from defense is a real boon to all of you and for us too. I thank you very much, sir. And uh, I wish the students make use of this opportunity uh, to involve yourself much better with reference to the area that you have stepped into. Thank you, everyone. So I, I, I like to invite faculty members of NIT to come forward so that uh, we may take a group photo. So I request uh, the faculty members come front so that we will take a group photo. Good evening, sir. 